Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Top Corner, the football podcast from the stables of Sports Circle. Today we are talking about the Europa League final. What went down? How Manchester United sort of bottled it again, slightly <laughs> expectedly, and uh, we have two somewhat disappointed people on the panel today. <laughs> Shivam, you already know. We have Jimmy joining us today. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, hey, Jimmy. You? What up? Good man. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Okay. So, how's, how's the feeling post match? <laughs> uh, well, what to say? Uh, disappointed with the performance, even more than the result, I'd say. Uh, hmm. But firstly, I think uh, congratulations are in order to all VRL fans, to the city, to the team, to the. This is their first proper cup victory. This is the first title that they've won a major this is title. Major title ever, not just a cup victory yeah. ever, yeah. ever. So that is huge and very well deserved too. But absolutely, uh, well, you know, congratulations there. Well, well deserved. Well deserved to them. Uh... They they went unbeaten the whole season, by the way, the whole Europa League season. Yeah, and uh, Unai Emery needs to be spoken about, needs <laughs> yes. to be appreciated, deserves all the praise he is getting right now. Like he didn't have the best time in the Premier League, but uh, he has gone back to Spain and proved that he's one of the top managers. And he should be uh, respected more than respected, and uh, he, he should be. Respected in that, in admired in the same, in, exactly. in, in his field in the this same was, way. This, this was his fourth uh, Europa League title, which is the highest by any manager ever. Now, yeah, which is brilliant. And uh, four out of five attempts. One attempt obviously was with Arsenal. Somebody <laughs> sent me a meme today. One of our friends, you you also know that guy. Um, he sent me a meme today, like how to win a Europa League. And uh, first step, hire Unai Emery. Second step, don't be Arsenal. That's it. That's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> that's so. a good one. But you know, it's it's the man, and he talks a lot about him. You know how he shaped up the team, which has never won any any major, you know, cup, and uh, how he made them believe that they can be winners. And uh, staying unbeaten for a team which has never won any major league. It's a you know it's a feat in itself, and that tells you a lot about the man and the effort he has put in behind that team, and also about his the way he sees things, the way he sees football, the way he sees his tactics, and you know basically how he unlocked all the opposition, the all the opposition uh, he was playing and uh, uh, emerged to be the winner. True, true. Yeah, he, totally, he had totally agree plans. with that, Jimmy. He had specific plans for every opposition, and I think yesterday's game, you guys can obviously. Shivam and Jimmy, you guys mm-hmm. obviously know how Manchester United was stifled throughout. So I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, totally, Shivam, totally. I'll, I'll ask you to take on, <laughs> take it on. I now. would uh, say, that, you know, uh, when we predicted yesterday, most of it uh, went right, except for the scoreline that I predicted, my which you got right, by the way. My prediction was spot yes, on. Nine exactly. minutes, one all penalties, VRL one. So exactly, bang on, Sajay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was eleven ten at the last. In the last. At the and last. Every, that's yeah, probably the longest penalty shootout ever. That's just, no twenty one. It, it, uh, it, it in African Cup, it's gone up to twenty two penalties. So I think it, it was just. Shy. Wo dekha nahi na. Ah, wo, probably, wo. probably the longest people Record have watched. Ah, yeah. since like Absolutely, people have properly yeah. watched on this. This ah, really this went was, to the last player. Otherwise, this was going to be repeated again. But. Yeah. Well, for United, it shouldn't have gone that far. Mm. We were the favorites, not the heavy favorites, not according to me, but the favorites. Uh, but well, the performance wasn't there. At least, no, not not the kind of performance that you want to see. And I know this, you can answer probably better. So, as a neutral, you know, <laughs> how was the match according to you? As as a neutral, it wasn't exactly a fun watch. I mean. Mm. Manchester United got out of the blocks quick. I'll give them that. They had the pace. They had the intent, at least in the midfield, to get the possession and play the ball quickly. But credit where it's due, Villarreal had a very solid plan in place, and mm. they contained the whole thing very, very well. They never really yes. let 
Manchester United go free, especially in the first half. Like yeah, yeah. a lot of possession in, in the think, whole match. I think, yeah, I think match. before the recording, Jimmy also was mentioning they had a lot of possession. They just weren't able to convert the chances. The problem is they hmm. weren't able to convert the chances. Yes, and they weren't really getting a lot of chances to actually convert. Yes, yeah, they had yeah. possession. Like no final third, they didn't really have much to do. No huge, no big chances were created. Honestly, by either side. Honestly, by either side. Up until the last few minutes, I didn't think Villarreal were even. They even felt like, uh, you know, pushing on for another goal. Uh, honestly, I have seen after a very, very long time such a defensive performance. Especially, I'm not criticizing no, at all. It's I, a I, good I really, defensive I really, performance. I really don't agree but, on to that. I'll tell you why. Uh, if you look at the position. 62% mm. of the match position was with Manchester United. Despite, and the, you know, in the, especially in the first half, and despite all the push from Manchester United, they just failed to convert any chances, real, you know, some, you know, half chances into real chances. But one yeah. chance, you know, with a very, very tiny position, one chance uh, they got, and uh, uh, Villarreal went ahead and scored the goal and they opened the score line, right? And basically, they were, you know, they then if you look at the Villarreal, the way they played, the defense was extremely, extremely solid. And that was their plan. They wanted a very solid defense. And they really made it difficult for Manchester United to come forward, attack them, and, you know, take the game away from them. It was very, very difficult for Manchester United to break through the defenses. You know, it would get past the midfielders, but it was very difficult for Manchester United. And a reason behind that was, if you look at the performance of Rashford, it's you know, <laughs> the way Rashford played, it was a very rash play in a sense that this man was extremely contained, hardly moved the ball around, hardly passed the ball around. He was contained in his left corner where he was playing. He was just, you know, Rashford was very, very ordinary yesterday. It was like he doesn't yeah. belong to a league club. He's a, you know, he's a second league club kind of a player. And he he just seemed lost. He just seemed out of touch. And I don't know why I'll, Rashford. I'll, 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 I'll come in. I'll come in on that. Rashford has agree, been having yeah. an injury for a while and he probably shouldn't have started the game. A game Maybe not. Magnitude a game against such defensive op- opposition. He probably shouldn't have started if he was already carrying an injury. And there have been... If reports. he was. There have been reports that in the last like three, four games he has been carrying an injury. And... Yeah, he was. He, he, did, probably, he did get he probably, in. But... He probably would have uh, made more of an impact as a substitute. Once like the defense was getting tired slightly, because by the time Villarreal got tired, Manchester United were already tired. And See, but that's yeah, that's where the sorry that's where the sorry state of Manchester United. Exactly. Starts. I mean, exactly. must start study team to a place where they have to play a man who's not really fit, just because he carries enough weightage in his name, tells you that their bench strength is really really weak, and you know they they don't they're not confident exactly. with the other players. Exactly. But playing there. Exactly. Even even despite having the option of five substitutes, they didn't really have a, a lot of uh-huh. impact substitutes to bring on. They were bringing on Fred. Uh-huh. They were bringing on other defenders. Like they didn't really uh-huh. have much to bring on off the bench. Also, I think I think they didn't have any plan B on how to contain. Uh, no. you know, yeah, I agree. They, to they that. had no. They had no plan B how to go with the game if they don't get ahead with the. I don't and think we had a. I don't think we had a proper plan A yesterday. I mean, no, the I point thought, was... I saw, the pa- I saw plan A and I could see it in the first half, especially when Manchester was really moving forward, was keeping the position, quicker legs, uh, quicker zeal, you know, mo- most of zeal to get to the goal and try and, you know, convert. But the story with Manchester United, they do create a lot of chances. They just can't score, get past the goalkeeper into the net. And the, the, the set-piece issue reared its head again. Ah, reared its ugly head, it did. Shivam, Shivam yeah. has been Shivam has been talking about this the whole season now. They just cannot defend set pieces. Yeah, I mean, I know if Maguire would have been there, I mean, I'm not saying one player would have made the difference. He, it, we seem slightly stronger then, but in general, I don't think it. It has been the whole season and plus that we we just look very weak on corners and free kicks, and we just you know uh, do not know how to defend them. We, be it the defenders or be it the midfielders uh, trying to, uh, you know, mark the opposition forwards. It just, it's just weak and it's cheap. 
I think it also comes to the, the the tactics around the set pieces. I mean, you have to after a point. See, they're not bad players. They and they're big players. Like mm-hmm. in terms of physicality mm-hmm. and physical. In size. terms of physicality, yes, yes. They're big players. They're all big players, so they shouldn't huh? be like be beaten so easily all the time. They shouldn't be muscled out in these situations. Exactly. exactly. After a point, the question has to fall down to the coaching, the management, the tactics. Like, yes. what are you doing? What are you drilling? If you're seeing a clear pattern. Like clear pattern actually coming out, a, a clear weakness that opposition teams are always targeting. Then you have to actually mm. do something about it in the training ground. You can't yes. just expect to like put the players on the field and be like, okay, do whatever you can. I think you know the problem with Manchester United is about uh, you know what you call is paralysis. They are into this paralysis mode where they are not acknowledging what's wrong with them. Yeah. They are sticking to the only plans they have and they are not thinking beyond it. Also, I think the morale of the play- players is quite down, down because if you see at their individual performances as well, you know, body language tells you a lot of things. The only man which really, really stood out for me and he always stands out is Van Bissaka, the way he played. You know, he was he was energetic. He was there. He was you know he was pushing the opponent. He was at the right time. He was in the defensive lines as well, and and he gave his best. But apart from that, you know, a uh, performance from McDonnell was good. The rest yeah. were really, really average. Cavani was trying his best, but you know, uh, you look at Pogba. Now, I was surprised to see where Pogba was actually playing. He was not, you know, and I I fail to understand why when Pogba went so far ahead, why nobody was feeding him more balls so that he could actually go for the goal. It didn't happen. So uh, obviously, the cohesiveness was lacking. The tactics were lacking. Uh, the communication was not properly there. Manchester United really, really need to, you know, put themselves together, and they really need to come up with a plan for, you know, for the future. Because otherwise, I don't see them. It's, it's a, it's a, it's our day will win. It's our day will lose. But it's not going to be some of the heavyweight team kind of things where, you know, which is feared by the opposition, and oppositions will see a chink in the armors every time, and they will always exploit it. And Manchester United yes, will yes. always fall behind. On, on, That's how I see. Back of this performance, on the back of this season, so to speak. Do you think Ole is still the right man at the helm? Is is should Ole still be at the wheel next season? Uh, yeah. Look, the, the, if see, you do not have a stability. better option coming in, I will tell, tell you why I am asking I'll, this I'll question. I will tell you why I am asking this question. Wait. Hmm. Antonio Conte, hmm. Zidane. Hmm. Uh, there are chances of like a couple it? more. All of these managers are leaving their current employment. Conte ka bhi mm-hmm. confirm ho gaya hai. Sure. Uh-huh, of course, I've seen that. Allegri, Allegri is like you said, Allegri is probably going to join Juventus, but let's see, let's see. Uh, at, at present, mm-hmm. as, at the present, he's... At, as as we speak, these people are available. If you don't have a better manager available in the market, then obviously you give more. Then of course, you have Antonio Conte available. He has won the league mm-hmm. wherever he's gone. Mm. In the last decade or so, wherever he's gone, he came to Chelsea, turned them into champions. Went to Inter, turned them into champions. Just so, and at the at this point, Manchester United more than trying to build a process and trying to romanticize the whole Sir Alex Ferguson era. Okay, we'll do this this way and all because Ole Ole is doing that only more often than not to the point of desperation where he took Alex Ferguson to the Europa League final. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, you know, know, I'll tell you something. So, Jay, see, tell no, you wait, something. seeing as that, because... Unai Emery did not only defeat Ole, he also defeated <laughs> <laughs> Sir Alex Ferguson. That's wait, <laughs> but, on a seri- but on a serious note, I'll tell you something. You yeah. know, we talked about uh, coaches who are being available in the market and can Manchester United get them. But more than uh, the coaches, the problem with these kind of coaches is that they want their own players with them as well. But they, they shape up the team mm-hmm. according to the players that the team is fit. Does Manchester United really have those these pockets left for them to back up these new managers? Or is Ole the best bet? Because Ole is one guy who can actually, uh, you know, mentor a young team. He is somebody who will be looking at a long uh, haul and he will be somebody who will be slowly coming out of, you know, all the difficulties and all the challenges they have. And he'll be looking for a step-by-step process to overcome them in his own pace. So that's the question that I would I would ask rather than thinking that what do we have available in the market? But does Manchester United really, really can go and 
that far and that deep and that aggressively into the market and buy some. Because look, we know what Manchester Manchester United have had and look at the current players they have. I mean, I'm not demeaning any player here, but then the quality is not the same, right? The star study team from right when it started with David Beckham till Cristiano Ronaldo, and we have so many names to go. But if you look at the lineup today, they hardly have those kind of real leaders, uh, aggressive players left in their kitty. And as I said earlier as well, you know, if they have to think that we need to change Rashford because Rashford is not in 100% fit and they're not even confident on the bench, then what is really yeah. wrong with Manchester United? That's the question. I, I, ask. I think this, the whole, this was a point that I also spoke with Sujay before that uh, the manager does not trust our bench. It's not the best bench in the world. It's it's no Man City uh, B team, but it's still not as bad as playing the same players for 90, 100 minutes, seeing them tired and still not making substitutions. That doesn't make sense. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I... It, it, it isn't that bad a squad that you cannot put in a couple of players after 100 minutes when you know, you know, with the kind of seasons that you have. He did that, know, but I think I think he lacked, a, he lacked a plan B. He put in Fred. He lacked you know. a plan B and he, he lacked he... trust and confidence in the rest of the in, squad. It's, in the it's always the with these 11 or 12 players that he trusts. The rest are still to convince the manager. The manager is still to convince the fans and the world because tactically, uh, and uh, you know, we've spoken a lot about United, but tactically, uh, Unai Emery won the game easily. In in the match itself, I saw Unai Emery change his formation and ch- tactics at least thrice. At least thrice. He played a 4-3-3, he played a 4-4-2, he played a 4-1-4-1 within those 90 plus minutes. Yes, he did. We only he was, played he was... one sort of game and hoped that, you know, this will get us past. And this but, is where the but, but despite, is despite all expertise, despite, in, you know. True, but despite all of that, I would make a point. You know, I think Manchester United threw away the opportunity and that came in the second half and Rashford had the ball right in front of him and he failed to convert that. It was an easy goal, but he just couldn't connect with it. And that uh, The expect- one that just went past the keeper, I yes, think it was an offside. It, I think uh, it was an offside call, but still, I mean, he should no, it have not still put an it inside. That, that was an easy goal, should have been put inside, but that's where you lose matches, when you fail to convert easy chances right in front of you and you give them up, that's where you lose the matches. And that's where I think yeah. Manchester United you, gave away the match. You're right, Jimmy. I think you lose such matches specifically, especially when you are playing against an opposition that is so rugged and so defensive and so good at it. I mean, Villarreal, uh, the way they played, they did not want to put a lot of bodies forward. They were content no, without they pressing. They they did not want to press uh, United's players, especially in the first 90. And this, I think, you know, Jimmy, you know, I know, Sujay, even you would agree. United's defenders are, can be easily pressed and harassed to get the ball out of it. It's not that. Not only that. Especially uh, you know, but I also they thought they would have gone with that tactic. But they did. They might have even got with the tactic that we need to get in the penalties. Because if you look at David Gia's, uh, you know, yeah, record of saves. They did. In and 2015, they, he has not even the... saved a single penalty. So they saw their chance right there as well. Yeah. They had a better yeah, goalkeeper. I mean, Ruel is a fantastic yes. goalkeeper. He made uh, a couple of, course, of lovely but... saves last time. You know, so that could have been a part of the strategy to take it right to the penalty shootout and then beat them at their own game. That could yeah. also have happened. That could have also happened. I mean, but they changed things in the match. They came with a set plan, but then they kept changing. They made the substitutions at the right time, kept the players fresh. And it was just... He He just rotated the bench. He put his fresh legs for old legs. And, you know, he was up the game. He he was really, really up there. He was out there. So, Emery really really pulled pulled a really smart smart match, you know, game management on yeah. Ole and and United. Yeah, and of it, course, individually United also. were found lacking. Like on, on yeah. overall Individually fans. also, we, a lot of players are found lacking. We will be doing a United season review soon. Yeah, we'll talk know. more about Ole and his future and United's future there. Mm-hmm. This one, I think we should wrap up here. And uh, let's see. Let's see where United's future takes them. VRL is going yeah. to the Champions League. Five La Liga yes. this season, but, but United you know, now. Actually, something. 
despite despite all, the of United, despite all the criticism of United, they still made it to the finals. And that in itself is something, a big takeaway for Manchester United, right? Not because, really, not really. Because see, they finished second in the league. They finished second in the Europa League, which is not the premier league. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So, so that is not something a club of Manchester United stature should be happy with. They shouldn't be content. No, with. but no, I'm not saying they should be happy with. It. What I'm saying is that they have the some... potential to reach there. They have the potential mm. to reach at these places. It's just that when it matters the most, they really need to up their game and show them that they mm. are the real champions, yeah. which they are yeah. lacking right that's, now. That's, that's what, what I'm talking about. Let's, let's talk more and about hopefully this. in the United season review. We are wrapping this one up here, and uh, sure. Okay, and this was the congratulations, Europa League. Yeah. Big congratulations yeah, to VRL. And uh, big. Uh, we'll big see them in the Champions huge, League next year. Huge credit to Unai Emery. However much we yeah. do make fun of him for his tender in the, in the Premier League, he is <laughs> and he remains one of the top managers in the world at, at the moment. And yeah. nobody, nobody can take that away from him. And so yeah, that was it. That was it, guys. And I'll thank you both to, for for hey. um, Jimmy. Thank you. I hope I hope you Thanks, enjoyed Jimmy. your yeah, that was good. first I'm podcast welcome, with us. And we will uh, all have you on for It more. was a pleasure. We we will it's be doing pleasure. the Champions League match preview soon. And uh, I hope to see you for that as well. And yeah, that'll be great. For, for all to. you guys listening in, watching in at home, stay safe. Do subscribe to the channel. There is a lot more coming. And uh, if you like this video, please do like and share it with as many people as you can. And uh, that's about it for today. Adios. See you. Have a good time. Bye.